Hi guys, how you doing? This is Pete from Integrated. Um, I'm just here to give you guys a quick rundown of the Vipec uh, engine management tuning software, uh, some of its features and capabilities, and give you guys an idea of just exactly how different this is from um, tuning a stock ECU or a stock ECU flash or anything like that. Um, so what we've got here is we've got a file open from a motor we tuned um, a few weeks ago. Uh, this is actually a Bonneville, the Bonneville Passat, um, and it was running on a Link ECU, but it's the same ECU. Um, and here you can see it's just his fuel table. Um, so basically, this is, ECU is a million times more simple to tune than a factory ECU. Uh, it's more of what you see is what you get. Um, we're looking at the fuel table here. Um, so these numbers are the numbers that the ba the fueling is based on. It, typically on these they do not run in closed loops so um, if you increase or decrease this fuel you literally do get more or less fuel at whatever RPM you want. Um, so there's a lot less chasing your tail uh, trying to figure out why the ECU isn't really doing what you thought it should be doing. Um, and the tables are quite simply labeled as well. Uh, this one here is called fuel table one. It's very simple, obvious. It's the main fuel table. Um, the RPM, the axis values here are just RPM along the top and then basically uh, manifold pressure along the left. And um, these numbers that are in here are basically irrelevant. Um, they're just a number from 0 to 100 that represents VE, um, but however, it's all scaled through a master trim and stuff, so they're, they're not really anything in particular. Um, so anyway, this is just where we started. Um, we're just on a main configuration page here. And um, these gauges here, you can see, all these gauges here are completely user configurable, which is why this particular screen is kind of chunky looking. Um, you can add by just right clicking, you can pick any of these gauge types and just add them, configure them as you need. Um, so this entire screen here can really be customized however you want. Um, now all the settings are organized into this menu here on the left. I'm going to try to move through this relatively quickly because I could spend honestly an hour going through this with you guys. But uh, I think a lot of you may not care for that level of depth. Um, so I'll go into the fuel menu here because it's got it's a fairly complicated one. Um, but anyway, most of the stuff you don't even really have to get into. If you click here on the top is fuel setup. The fuel main table here is going to have one or two things you'll have to play with depending what size injectors you do. So if you buy one of these ECUs, it's going to come with a KO3 file for factory injectors. And one of the first things you're going to have to do if you have, say, thousands, is cut this master fuel value down by a factor of, you know, four. Because um, the factory fuel injector is like 250 cc's or whatever it is. Um, so this is going to quickly scale the entire fueling. Um, now, coming down here, you get into some stuff cold start. Uh, the bigger the injectors are, generally, generally the less cold start and warm start you'll need. Um, but it's pretty quick, and they start right out of the box, so you don't have to get into too much of this. Um, and I'll come back and show you guys some more advanced stuff here when we go back around here. But at the bottom here is basically the AFR target. So whenever you're doing closed loop or uh, auto tune, these are the numbers it's going to shoot for. Same axis values, basically, again, RPM and load. So you can see we were going for a fairly rich, uh, really safe air fuel ratio to keep the temps down on this Bonneville project, you know. And then at the bottom here is your fuel table. So basically what you take in here, say we're at this cell here, is going to get multiplied by your fuel corrections, which are here. So you've got uh, intake air temperature, for example, uh, coolant temperature, that stuff. That's going to get multiplied or subtracted by that, and then, um, and then it out goes to the injector, and that is what it is. There's no... Uh, calculating or guessing other than that. So in this case you can see um, it's got some IAT trims and stuff in here. Um, now let's see. So basically the ignition works much the same. Um, if you come here to your ignition corrections you get the same stuff. Intake. So here you're trying to save the motor. Intake ter air temp is going to drop the timing. Once you get over 100 degrees Celsius or so or 90 here it's going to really start to fall off. Um, and you can set this stuff up however you want to protect your motor, you know, um, or you can disable it all if you want. I, I recommend setting it up because in this case you really have a good understanding of what it's doing uh, and you're the one configuring it. There's no mystery, so it's not too bad. 
And then here's your individual cylinder trims. Um, you can set that up under there. Uh, as well as your ignition dwell. I mean, you just have literally control of everything. Uh, so here's the ignition table. It's much the same, you know. And then there's also uh, an idle ignition table. Uh, and you just, that's where it's going to idle. Now, we'll just go through the inputs and outputs really quickly. Um, so the first thing, of course, is the outputs. Um, these are cool. I mean, on the plug-in ECUs, you still have a few of these to use. Um, but basically, you can run damn near anything off these ECUs. You can see here, I mean, um, there's general purpose ones, both pulse switch modulated and just switched. And then all kinds of predefined features here. You can go online and get the list, but um, pretty much anything you can dream up. Um, now, the GP ones are particularly useful. And I'll show you why here. We'll just go down to one on here that was pre-configured. Now this one was driving a warning light. <clears throat> so here we have uh, its conditions. These are switched, so it's conditions one or two and three. So basically what we're saying here is if the um, if its oil pressure is under 50 um, or the coolant temperature is over 130, and the engine is going faster than 4,000 RPMs, this was going to light up a big warning light in the car for the driver. Um, and you can really, I mean, you can pick anything wired into the ECU for these. So you can get really creative here. You can set up your own water meth kits. You can set up nitrous kits. You can set up whatever you can dream up, basically. Uh, intercooler sprayers, fans, I mean, you name it. Um, so those are really useful. Um, and then digital inputs, these are switched inputs. So toggle switches on your dash. Say you want a toggle switch that's going to arm your nitrous system or a target a toggle switch that's going to, um, we can just put a general purpose input. How about a target, a toggle switch that switches it between a race fuel map and a, and a pump gas map? You can set those up into here. Um, and then analog inputs, these mostly be configured for you guys, but it's stuff like uh, the coolant temps, air temps, uh, the wideband, is one and so if we come in and we look at like this wideband you can see um, these just use a cal table they can use either a cal or a cal table cal is for linear things like this one goes from half volt to four and a half volt and it has um, 8 to 22 afr or if you need a table say it's not linear you can map something that's non-linear into a table here so you can pretty much input anything into this thing um, so that makes it extremely powerful, you know. Under motorsport, you've got your basics, anti-lag, launch control, uh, gear cut control. That's going to do your, your flat shift, your anti-lag. It's a real anti-lag, uh, as much timing pull and extra fuel and stuff as you want. I mean, you can make 25 pounds uh, on the anti-lag easily. Um, let's see, electronic throttle. Here's your e-throttle table. You can tune this however you want versus RPM, foot position. Um, so that's sort of the basics. And then here you've got boost control. It'll do open loop or closed loop boost control, um, whatever you want. So the, one of the things that I wanted to show you guys basically that shows really how powerful this ECU is beyond just a basic ECU is the four and five D fuel mapping as well as timing mapping. Um, so what we'll do is we'll jump in here and set that up really quick. Um, if we come here, we just say we're going to want a 4D table. And uh, I think a perfect example here is say you wanted to make a true flex fuel vehicle. Uh, I'm not talking switched. I'm not talking like switching maps. I'm talking pure flex fuel, any percent ethanol you want, uh, anything like that. So it's going to give us a 4D table. And you'll notice pretty much any table in this ECU you can right click on and uh, pick axis setup. Right now it's defaulted to engine speed and throttle position, but we're going to make this thing flex fuel, so we don't really want that. So we're going to come here and right click anywhere on the table and pick axis setup. Um, and instead of RPM, we're going to say, hey man, I want uh, I want ethanol percent. So, and I just clicked in the axis, and it knows roughly what the values are for that, so it knit it from 0 to 100 percent. And then here, just to be thorough, we'll go ethanol temperature. And we're going to hit a knit again and see it gives us a nice temperature. All right. 
So say you know 100% or at 85% ethanol, you need 35% more fuel. Well, you can do this. We'll just go, hey, we want 35. Maybe at 100%, you need 45. Um, and then you can tune this on the dyno as you need, and we'll just interpolate it for fun. Now, um, so there you go. Here you have gas. Here you have E100. Um, this thing's going to automatically tailor your fuel curve as you go. Um, and then temperature, ethanol temperature. Say you find out that you need, you know, 10% uh, more fuel when it's when the ethanol is cold. Well, um, we'll just go in here and say value, and we're going to say 10% more fuel. And then you can interpolate these uh, vertically as well. So now you have a a real flex fuel on the fueling, um, and you can control ignition timing uh, much the same way. We can come in, we can make an extra ignition an extra ignition table. I'm not going to set it all up, but you get the point. Um, and you can even do the same thing for boost control. So this thing's so powerful. I mean, you can literally control fuel timing boost based on anything you want um, from, say you, I mean, you could go to the extent you could have it, your car run more boost when there's more people in the car, basically. Um, so anyway, this software is really powerful that way. And it's just, it's really cool to be able to set it up exactly how you want. So um, thanks for sticking with me through that. I tried to keep it brief, um, but we're going to basically shoot another video, um, and that one will actually have an engine live. You notice we've been offline this whole time. Uh, on the next one, we're going to do live, and we will be breaking in an engine, um, and then I'll show you guys some tuning. It's really quick and simple. It can be done with the engine running. It's on the fly, um, as well as some of the data logging capabilities, which are huge and uh, give you guys just a better idea of what this thing can do. Thanks a lot.